Boys and girls, we're back at school. Isn't that exciting? Yay! Um, we've been through a rough couple of weeks as a province and as a country, and it really got me thinking. You know, um, the disciples also went through troubled times in their life, and um, when they went through tough times. I wonder what it is that they did. What do you think the disciples did when they went through tough times? Well, that's what we're going to be um, finding out in today's, in today's story and in today's scripture reading. But before we go through to our lesson for today, let us open in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, that even though we go through troubled times, even though we go through times of difficulty in our lives, you are always there. You are always there holding our hand. You are always there guiding us. So thank you, Lord, for your ever-present love. And Lord, we just pray that you continue to be with us and walk this journey with us. We know, Lord, that we would be nothing without you. And so we thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. We thank you, Jesus, for your ever presence and for never forsaking us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything you do for us and our families. And this we pray in your precious name. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, we are now going to head off to our story. Okay, I'll see you a little later. Bye. Okay, boys and girls, today's lesson is responding, how to respond to tough times. Now, the truth is, we will all go through some tough times in our lives, whether we like it or not. Um, if it hasn't happened, it will happen. Um, it's, it's bound to happen. Tough times will always happen. And we, like I mentioned earlier, as a province and as a country have gone through tough times but the disciples also went through tough times now how did they respond and that leads to our lesson for today but before we go into our scripture reading for today I just want to paint the picture of where we leading into the to the scripture of today so the scripture comes from Acts 4 but before we go to Acts 4 I want us to go to Acts 3 so John and Peter are casually walking to church they're going to church and they come across this beggar on the side of the road and he says oh can you please give me some money uh, i need money and the beggar asks oh, for money from peter and john but the beggar gets something beyond what he ever expected he would get so instead of giving him money john and peter heal him imagine that here you are you wake up in the morning and you do what you've been doing for the last couple of years you limp over to the town main town and you go and beg and you hand there with your hands open asking everyone for pity and for your hand um, for money and then you get healing 
you can now walk when you could never walk. Isn't that incredible? Which one would you choose? Money or the ability to walk and be healed? I thought as much. Healed, right? So he got more than he ever bargained for. And so this is the picture that is happening as Peter and John are walking to church, they meet a beggar, he's asking for money, and then they heal the beggar. But then there's a little problem. There are people who have actually got a problem with Peter and John healing the beggar. Can you imagine that? Who on earth would have a problem with two people helping another person? This person wanted money and now has been healed. And there are people who have got a problem with Peter and John healing this beggar. Who on earth would have that problem? So these people were the religious leaders of the time the Pharisees, the elders of the church. These were the people who had a problem with John and Peter healing the cripple. They actually had them arrested and trialed the next day. And when they came in front of the elders and the Pharisees and the religious leaders the following day, they tried to get Peter and John to stop preaching about Jesus Christ and the salvation. Can you imagine that? The religious people at the time were trying to get Peter and John to stop preaching about Jesus. And they had a problem with Peter and John healing this crippled beggar. That's like people of authority in your life, your teacher, uh, uh, your parents, or Anyone you look up to as an authoritative person trying to tell you not to do the right thing. I wonder what John and Peter decided after this. We'll have to find out a little bit later, don't we? So then, all the religious leaders and Pharisees and elders gather together and they plot a plan. What are we going to do with these men? They asked. Everyone living in Jerusalem knows they have done an outstanding miracle and we cannot deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn these men to speak no longer to anyone in this name. They then called them in again and commanded them not to speak or preach at all in the name of Jesus. But John and Peter replied and said this to them, Judge yourselves whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than God, for we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. How bold! of Peter and John. You must also remember that these elders and Pharisees and religious, religious leaders all had a big part to play in Jesus being crucified. So these men are actually quite dangerous. So for Peter and John to be so bold and speak to them like that really took courage. And this is in time of trouble. Don't you just love the Bible? It's full of like juicy details. Don't you want to know what happens afterwards? So what happens next? So in verse 21, we find out what happens after John and Peter have basically asked them, what do you want us to do? Should we listen to you? Or should we listen to God? Uh, and so this is how it reads. After further threats, they let them go. They could not decide how to punish them because all the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man who was miraculously healed 
was over 40 years old. Isn't that amazing? So they didn't even know what to do with him. They were just like, we've got no crime against you guys. We're going to have to just let you go. They just had, they could just give more threats. Amazing, isn't it? Okay, let's read on and, and see what happens. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices to gather in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do nations rage and peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth take they stand and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against the anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the peoples of and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against the holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform miracle signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Isn't that amazing? So they're going through tough times and they come out after having spent a night in prison, being trialed by dangerous elders who really were and are told not to go out and preach in the name of Jesus. And they come out and they tell all the people how they've been treated. And then they say, let us pray to God. So in troubled times, they took courage and they stood for God and believed in God. And number two is they prayed. They prayed so much that the place that they were meeting in was shaken. That's like the room in which we are, if we are praying together, shakes like an earthquake. That is how much they prayed. They, sh they prayed so hard that the room shook. And that is what we need to do in troubled times. Is that we need to take courage, be bold in God, and pray. So if we're going through tough times, boys and girls, take courage and know that God is with you and pray. And that is the message. God wants us to take courage in him and God wants us to pray to him. We need to pray so hard that the walls in our bedrooms shake. Okay, boys and girls, I hope to see you guys soon. Lockdown restrictions have been lifted. Yay! I can't wait to see you guys in person. Also, please do me a favor. Press the like button um, on this video and press the sub subscribe button as well. It helps the church a great deal. Okay, boys and girls, remember, take courage and pray. I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that we can come to you in times of trouble and in times of need. Thank you, Lord, that you are with us always, just like you were with Peter and John on the day of their trial. Lord, uh, just help us, Lord, we pray, to take courage in you, to know that you are our Father and that you will always be there with us. Lord, help us come to you in times of need. Let us know that you are there so that we can come to you, Father, like a child comes to a parent 
through prayer so that we might know that you will give us the boldness and the courage to go into the world. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us, Jesus. We love you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.